This lesson is going to be on density. Methods of determining the volume of a substance, and we're also going to learn about understanding how to do density calculations. So some terminology that you guys need to know are the following. Uh, density is the degree of compactness of a substance, which is measured by the quantity of mass per volume. Mass is what we describe as the measure of the amount of matter in a body. It is not the same thing as weight. Right, because weight takes account gravity. Mm -hmm, that downwards pull. And volume is the amount of space that a substance or object occupies or that is enclosed within a container, which means solid, liquid, or gas. Correct. So we're going to be using two different types of tools to find volume in this course. The first type, which we're going to be using often, are graduated cylinders. A graduated cylinder are things is... things that are very smart. Yes, because they graduated from high school, college maybe. <laughs> but when you do use a graduated cylinder, you are going to be specifically looking for a meniscus. And the meniscus is when you look at the cylinder at eye level, it is going to be the portion that the lowest part of the curve of the liquid is at. That is called the meniscus. Another way to figure out the volume is to use a metric ruler. And you will not be using inches. You're going to be using centimeters. So one that we all know is volume is equal to length times width times height. Another one, which is for cylindrical or cylinder solids, is volume is equal to pi times the radius squared times its height. Now, just an FYI for all of you, milliliters and centimeter cubes are equal to one another. Okay. That's going to pop up also later on in the lesson. So we also have these electronic scales in our class, and that's to measure mass. Before weighing anything, it needs to be zeroed or recalibrated to read the 0, 0.00 grams. When first turned on or when left by the previous user, the balance may indicate something other than 0, 0.00. So you just press that little button. So whenever glass or plastic test tubes are or beakers are used, their own weight must be zeroed from the scale. So remember to put them on there first and then press the zero button. So there's also another method. It's called the water displacement method. And this is for finding the volume. Very much like the picture is showing a man who looks kind of weird jumping in a bathtub, Archimedes once realized that the volume that you are is equal to the volume of the amount of water you were to displace if you jump into a bathtub. So when an object is submerged in water, it pushes water out of the way, which means if you measure the amount of water, the, the water level increases, you can find the volume of the water pushed out of the way. So in a nutshell, using your graduated cylinder in an irregular object, you can drop it into a known amount of water, and then you would realize that when the water rises, the amount of volume that object is, is the volume the water rose. So now here's the density formula, and hopefully you're already familiar with it. It's on table T if you're not, but it's density, which is equal to the mass divided by the volume of an object. So you read the question, underline any quantitative values, remember quantity meaning numbers, plug quantitative values into the density formula and then cross multiply and divide to find missing values and your answer should be in the correct units. Now on your reference table it just says density is equal to mass over volume. Another way to make it easier for you guys is just to write it density over one. That way if we give you let's say density and volume it's still a cross multiplication problem to figure out what mass is. Right. You'll still figure it out the same way. So if you need to put that one in your in your reference table. So let's try this problem. All right. Using reference table S, which when you guys look at it is going to be a ton of information, we're going to first figure out the mass of pure silver based on the water displacement values that we have. So we're taking a lump of silver and dropping it into 50 milliliters of water. When we drop it in, we notice that the water level rises up to 63.3 milliliters. Remember, it does that because volume represents the amount of space it takes up. Okay, so you're noticing it from a 50 to a 63.3. So from start all the way over to finish. 
So now looking at table S, you find silver and the density for it, which is quantitative, is 10.5 grams per centimeters cubed. Find the volume of silver, which you know is the difference from start to finish. So plug in the numbers, you put density, then you put the volume, cross multiply, and then you get the mass to be 139.65 grams. And to check your work, all you have to do is 139.65 grams divided by 13.3 milliliters, and you should get 10.5. Now wait a second. Density has centimeters cubed and there's milliliters. They're not the same units, but we'll notice in our density facts that centimeters cubed and milliliters are equal to each other. So a fluid amount or a gas amount that's measured in milliliters is the same thing as a solid that is in centimeters cubed. Right. So the last formula, it did mean the same thing. They were able to cancel each other out. Mm -hmm. You'll also notice on reference table S that density is given to you, I believe, in centimeters cubed. Yes. All right. So water, it has a density of 1.0 grams per milliliter or one gram per centimeter cubed. And you need to know this. If your density is heavier than one, you're going to sink. If your density is lower than one, like 0.9 or 0.8, that object will float on water. Does ice have a density greater or less than one? It's going to have less because ice floats. Hmm. But if you have frozen grapes, they sink in water. Oh, interesting mm. fact.